Well, thank you very much for staying in here, and uh, thank you very much to our next presenter here for offering to speak earlier here so we could all enjoy a little bit longer lunch. So with uh, without uh, much ado, let me introduce Miguel, who's going to talk about a new EIP that I'm not familiar with, and so I'm looking very much forward to this. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone, again. So we'll talk about deposit reform, uh, which is a fancy term uh, denoting the EIP 6110 proposal, which is in one sentence can be said as an optimal way to deliver validator deposits to the consensus layer. A uh, quick reminder on how depositing is happening in Ethereum network. A staker prepares deposit data, then it uh, submits them to the deposit contract in a regular uh, transaction on the execution layer where it's been processed. Uh, after that happens, the ETH1 bridge uh, takes this data and put them into, into the backend chain uh, where this deposit data is being processed by the consensus layer and the new layer is created. So uh, this, this proposal does not affect the deposit contract logic. It also does not affect the consensus layer logic, uh, including the activation queue. So the huge activation queue that we observed recently would not be affected by this proposal if it were in place. Uh, so this proposal is mainly about the replacement of the ETH1 bridge. Um, and a fair question to ask here would be, why do we want to replace the, um, the thing that already works? Um, yeah, and next slide, during the next slides, we'll figure out why um, actually we should, we should do this. Okay, so um, yeah, let's ex examine the design of the bridge um, a bit. Uh, so we should step back a bit uh, to the pre-merge time. So what you see is the um, actually the outline of the mechanism that uh, uh, this is how the bridge basically work, worked before the merge. Uh, it is implemented as a proposer voting. A uh, proposer is to submit ETH1 data into every beacon block that they propose. Uh, ETH1 data includes deposit uh, tree root, deposit count and block hash, obtained from the proof of work block or from the execution layer block um, at a certain follow distance. Once proposers come to agreement on the ETH1 data, they start to include deposit data into the beacon chain, uh, fetching them by uh, JSON RPC API from the execution layer clients. That's basically how uh, the merge, uh, sorry, how the bridge uh, looks like. And what happens with the bridge uh, during the merge? Um, actually, nothing has happened. We still have uh, this bridge in place, which maintains the same logic. Uh, but there is one major difference. Uh, it is that uh, the bridge fetches data today that are already secured by the beacon chain. So it means that this bridge is entirely redundant. Uh, so we have the bridge, so what? Um, yeah, first, um, what do we know about bridges? Bridges are insecure in general. I would like to emphasize that if one bridge is probably the most secure bridge uh, in the entire blockchain world um, because it's driven by thousands of nodes running a variety of client software uh, with a rich client diversity. Um, and yeah, even though this uh, bridge has own um, issues. For instance, there is the um, design flaw uh, that undermines the security of the core protocol. An adversary controlling a slightly less than a half of validators in the network uh, can basically induce validators uh, from the deposits that were never submitted to the execution layer, then these validators can be uh, withdrawn, illegally printing a decent amount of ETH or other nasty things uh, can be done with them. Um, but th this, this issue is more on the theoretical side of things because uh, it is really very, very unlikely that on the main net uh, there will, will be a party that controls uh, half of validators. Um, yeah, aside of yeah, aside of uh, theoretical, there was a practical issue. What you see on the slide is basically the incident happened uh, about six months after the Beacon Chain launch. Um, and th this what you see is the Prism client uh, fails to propose blocks, uh, causing a mass uh, empty slots on the Beacon Chain mainnet. Um, and the reason behind this failure was the bug in the deposit caching, which is a part of uh, ETH1 bridge implementation in the Prism client and I believe in other clients as well. Um, yeah, fortunately, finality was not affected uh, that time, uh, thanks to client diversity and thanks to Prismatic team who fixed this issue quite quickly. Um, yeah. Also, bridges are complicated. Uh, the ETH1 data voting 
basically is a quite complex mechanism. So it can its description, its, its specification is quite complicated. And uh, yeah, what we see here is basically uh, the issue appeared in one of the uh, merge prototype devnets. Uh, Teku um, stopped uh, in this devnet. Teku stopped produce correct if one votes, uh, which actually prevented uh, new deposits from being processed and new validators from being created. Yeah, this issue never appeared on the mainnet uh, because that devnet uh, run ran a completely different uh, configuration than mainnet runs. But uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, it highlights the um, potential bugs that, uh, that caused by the engineering complexity of, of this construction. And also, um, who knows uh, what potential bugs we may still have today in the clients that can appear uh, later on. Um, yeah, so en engineering complexity is not uh, the only kind of complexity that is related to the bridge. Side of that, there is an node operator's complexity. Uh, various situations where consensus layer client uh, is failing to fetch deposit data from the execution layer client keeps occurring today, uh, which is especially, maybe especially annoying for home stakers who, when uh, setting up their nodes, uh, has to deal uh, with uh, s something like that instead of just enjoying running their validators at home. Um, uh, also, um, yeah, so uh, also thi this is like, uh, yeah, I would, I, I would like to say that uh, this complexity comes from the reliance on the JSON RPC API and different clients, different consensus layer clients use different uh, JSON RPC API methods to request uh, this uh, deposit data. So it's like, it could be a misconfiguration, it could be an interop issue between the client and server implementations of the JSON RPC. API, so yeah, but this issue occurs today, which is quite annoying. Uh, this not, yeah, that was not the only complexity that operators are suffering from. There is also the data complexity. Um, uh, this is because the fetching the entire history of deposits uh, is quite annoying and quite pain painful today because it takes a lot of time. And uh, thanks to his dreamer who came up with uh, the proposal of deposit contract snapshot, uh, which basically allows f for a consensus uh, for a consensus client to be bootstrapped with a snapshot of a deposit tree, instead of spending the time on fetching all the uh, entire history of deposits. Um, yeah, but to my knowledge, not every um, uh, consensus client actively uses uh, these snapshots today. So some of them are still uh, requesting historical deposits via JSON RPC API. Also, uh, because of this uh, historical data complexity, uh, this deposit contract snapshot proposal is kind of a requirement in, in the context of the bridge, it's kind of a requirement for uh, blockchain data expiry proposals like for FORS. So it's kind of like a requirement and uh, on the critical path to that. Um, and uh, yeah, um, there are requests from node operators just to disable uh, deposit syncing entirely for non-validated nodes because non-validated nodes does not basically need this data at all. And consensus layer client doesn't have this option uh, yet. So um, yeah, bridges can be slow. I don't claim that every bridge is slow, but uh, if one bridge is, uh, is slow, uh, it takes 12 hours uh, to deliver a deposit from the execution layer to the consensus layer. Uh, and uh, in the current design, we basically can't do much about it. So reducing this number would undermine the security of the bridge, hence the uh, entire protocol. Uh, so we would probably need to change the design of the bridge, but uh, why would we want to change the design of the things that is already redundant? So we went through the complexity and security uh, that might be or related to if one bridge. Uh, and basically uh, now, um, Let's talk about the solution. So uh, this, this solution is simple. Let's just deprecate it. Let's just get rid of it. So how can we do this? So what we basically do, as I've mentioned previously, the Beacon Chain already secures the data, the deposit data, it ha which means that it has a direct access to those data uh, with a kind of one problem. Um, it can't ensure validity of deposit transactions and it can't uh, parse uh, deposit transaction logs to extract uh, deposit data. And uh, what we do is basically defer these responsibilities to the execution layer clients. 
So execution layer clients becomes responsible of two things. Um, during creating a block, during building a block, um, the execution layer client will have to scan through uh, the transactions that are supposed to be included in the block uh, in order to find uh, those transactions that, that produce deposit data, uh, parse them, parse these deposit data and include them as a separate list into the same payload. Uh, when a node receives a block from the network, uh, the execution layer client of this node uh, will basically validate uh, this deposit list, uh, verifying, proving that this deposit list is correct with respect to the transactions included in this block. And after this validation passes, a uh, consensus layer client can take this deposit data uh, and uh, process them as it basically does today. So uh, no security checks on the consensus layer side is required. Uh, the security check are happening on the execution layer side. Uh, it means that the deposits will be processed in the same block uh, in which, in the same block uh, where deposit transaction is included. So it's kind of instant processing of deposits. It benefits many um, participants of, um, of the Ethereum community um, all over the Ethereum network protocol, uh, network stack. Uh, first of all, it addresses the design flaw in the core protocol, making deposits as secure as uh, the core protocol is. Um, it gets rid of the ETH1 bridge code from consensus layer client, significantly reducing the complexity of these clients. Um, it also, the new proposal does not rely on JSON RPC API, which means that uh, node operator's complexity will also go go away once this uh, lands uh, once this proposal lands the mainnet. Um, and after all, it improves uh, the deposit processing UX, uh, cutting the time to process deposit roughly by 60 times, which is just nice. Um, yeah, of course, as other as other proposals, this proposal. Um, comes with its own complexity. There is a negligible chain data growth. It's roughly about uh, 100 megabytes per year, uh, which, can, which is actually nothing. Uh, it opens up a potential DOS vector. Um, this is because an adversary, after this proposal uh, is activated, an adversary will be able to include uh, up to a thousand deposits into one block, uh, delaying the processing of this block by a second. This happens because uh, uh, processing of every deposit involves signature verification, which is computationally heavy operation. But this attack vector is kind of not not considered as a sustainable uh, because in order to make this, uh, in order to induce such load, uh, an adversary will have to spend uh, quite a uh, high amount of uh, value. Uh, so, uh, which means that the potential outcomes of this attack for adversary uh, are outweighed by the cost of this attack. There is also the execution layer client complexity. As I mentioned, uh, there will be a couple of responsibility that execution layer clients will have to handle. But this feature, uh, the implementation of this feature on the execution layer client side is kind of self-contained. It has high testability because it does not involve any networking uh, networking stack stuff is just basically block creation and block processing, which can be pretty well tested. And once it tests, uh, tested in the clients and implemented, they would not require any attention uh, onwards. There is also the s CL uh, client complexity, which is about managing um, the value of key cache. So after all, the, yeah, there is a transition period also um, why do we need transition period in this case is because um, because of the huge follow distance that each one bridge has, which is about 12 hours. Uh, and once these on-chain deposits are activated, there will be a gap of not processed, of not yet processed deposits last for 12 hours worth of uh, block space. And uh, we'll have to wait uh, for each one bridge to cover this gap. Uh, but once this happens, uh, the ETH1 bridge can be deactivated uh, without any uh, additional coordination. So it's like transition period is definitely a complexity. Uh, and the uh, consensus layer client and blockchain data services will have to support two machineries at the same time. Uh, but this is kind of like one-time complexity. We don't have to deal with it in the future.
once the transition is over. Now I want to talk a bit about of the 6110 status. Uh, the design and specification are pretty much uh, solid. Um, there is also a consensus layer test vectors, which is nice. Um, there is a working prototype uh, built uh, on with the lighthouse in Bazoo. Um, during this prototype project, uh, we ran multiple dev nets. Uh, we testing the core logic, testing the transition period logic. Also, we were doing stress testing. Uh, there was a dev net producing a blocks with eight about a 800 deposits each. We were measuring uh, the performance of clients um, under this load. Uh, many thanks to everyone who made this project happen. I, I was really enjoying uh, to be in a part of it. This QR code uh, would lead you to the um, detailed report uh, of this project. Also, uh, there is a low star implementation which is near to be finished. I also know that Tag Crew is looking into implementing 6110. And I would like to encourage every other, uh, especially execution layer client, to implement this feature. It could be a really nice project, uh, really nice uh, starting project for one of your external contributors or for a new member of your team because it's like, uh, it's, it has moderate complexity and on the other side it goes deep into the um, block processing and block building uh, stack which is kind of nice it does not has any does not have any uh, networking specifics uh, so yeah please consider this for uh, for the kind of like uh, really uh, good uh, first project for uh, everyone is coming to your team or starting to collaborate with it yeah so uh, this proposal is kind of like strict improvement to term network security and UX, which makes me personally pretty confident that eventually it will be on the mainnet. Uh, just a matter of time. Um, yeah, thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer questions. Any any questions from the audience? Yes. Go ahead. So um, 6110 basically relies on all the consensus layers to have uh, deposit snapshots enabled, uh, implemented. Is that correct? Sorry, say, say the this first part again. EAP 6110 require all of no. the consensus layers to implement uh, deposit snapshots? Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry if I messed that up. Uh, so deposit contract snapshots is required for uh, blockchain data expert proposals like four fours if we will if the bridge will uh, if we retain the bridge so we'll have to do something with the historical data we have to produce you know snapshots uh, to bootstrap nodes because this data will be expired basically but with uh, 6110 you don't have to do anything about that you it actually 6110 makes uh, no use for for uh, 881 for this deposit contract snapshot EIP. Sorry, is if dreamer. Cool. It, it seems though that like um, 6110 would be for new deposits coming in. Uh, how would we get if we're not using JSON RPC to get to parse deposit logs? How do we get the pre-existing for a new or for a newly syncing node? How are we getting the uh, deposits, the existing deposits? Oh, you you don't have to uh, get. Uh, the historical deposits once this is activated and uh, the gap is filled because all those deposits are already uh, on the beacon chain. So the CR consensus layer clients fetch deposits because they need to propose new blocks. This is why they're doing this. Um, if we replace the bridge with, uh, with like on chain deposits, uh, this will no longer require. So no, uh, no JSON RPC query request anymore will be needed. Yeah, I forgot to mention that it produces uh, sometimes enormous amount of load on EL client, which is really um, not good. All right, any other questions from the audience here? Okay, well again, a round of applause for our speaker, please. Thank you. That concludes our morning's um, program here. It is now time for lunch, which is just right outside the doors. We will resume uh, back on schedule, which I believe is 1.35. Check my math on it, but back in the room at 1.35.